Welcome to the party. I'm Sam Ekstrom of Locked On Sports Minnesota. Josh Dobbs has taken me lower to a street with potholes and where blind people are just still blind. <laughs> hey, this is Arif Hassan from the Wide Left Substack. I will not tell you why everybody is replying to Machine Gun Kelly with Case Cookies. I'm Luke Braun from the Locked On Vikings podcast. I got a max bet today. We're getting serious. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Luke Inman at Luke underscore Spinman back in the running for first place in our gambling picks. Uh, let's talk about it. Locked On Sports Minnesota podcast. It's endless Minnesota Vikings talk with the diverse voices of your local experts. It's time for the Minnesota football party. Welcome in on a Thursday. It's the Minnesota football party on Locked on Sports Minnesota. Uh, Luke Braun, Luke Inman, Reef Hassan. I'm Sam Ekstrom. Ron Johnson joins early in the show. You can watch us on the Locked on Sports Minnesota YouTube channel. Find us on the 24-7 YouTube live stream or listen to us on Locked on Vikings audio feed wherever you get your podcasts. And I'm already seeing all of the uh, the Spotify year wraps showing that you listen to an absurd number of hours of this programming. So thank you so much for all of you, um, for all of the uh, the engagement. We appreciate it. Uh, today's show is brought to you by Prize Picks. Yes, indeed, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code all lowercase locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Well, the last time we all met, we were confident the Vikings would be 7-5, and five, that they would beat the Chicago Bears on Monday Night Football. Wrong. 12-10 loss in wrong. Eh, ugly. Back, 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 just... back. Gone. <laughs> <laughs> I, the giddy smile for audio listeners, Sam is just grinning. Every time he gets to use the sound, five year old Sam yeah. comes up. I've got two sound effects on the button bar, and I love you. I've got <laughs> ear to ear, ear to ear. Never seen him happier. <laughs> That's it. That's all I've got. I've never added to it. You don't need any more. On today's show, we'll talk about what went wrong on Monday and who the Vikings should turn turn to at quarterback after the bye if they make a change. Their defense now top ten in the NFL. How did this happen? This is unbelievable. And the much awaited preseason prediction check in. How are we doing on our preseason uh, projections? Oh, boy. The answer, not too well. We'll check on that <laughs> later in the show. Ron Johnson joins momentarily. But, you know, we're, we're a ways past Monday night. We don't need to react to the game again. You saw the Locked on Vikings postcast. I'm sure Vikings lose 12 to 10. Josh Dobbs throws four picks. QB controversy is what we're focused on now, Luke Inman. We're talking about Josh Dobbs maybe losing his job two weeks after the Pasternot was taking off. He was the story in football, and now he's crashed back to earth. What do you make of the QB situation? Uh, yeah, I think for me, hearing everything I've heard KOC say at the pressers this week, which the main takeaway was all about just getting the offense back to the basics, just running this thing efficiently again. And you can hear it's really started to wear on him since losing Kirk Cousins that they haven't been able to run the offense with just the most basic rhythm, the most basic timing. Those were the two words we heard him say over and over this week. And I mean, it's one thing when you're still winning games, but now that you got what 10 straight quarters going back to the second half uh, of the Saints game, just the inability to do the most basic things, uh, hit the right amount of steps on your drafts, get the ball out on time, lead your targets open the right way, find the right check downs, et cetera. Obviously all that stuff is supposed to line up on time in any offense, like the, the, the trains are all supposed to get to the station at the same time, so to speak. I don't think this is all Josh Dobbs' fault, and we talked about that on the postcast a little bit, coming into the middle of the season like he did. But if it's that big of an annoyance as it sounds like it is to KOC with all the rhythm and timing stuff, which uh, obviously, as we've seen, is pretty important, if that's the number one detractor to his offense, which it sounds like it is, I'd be shocked if they go back to Dobbs at this point, just knowing there's only so much you can do in just such a limited amount of time. It's just going to take time at this point. And because of that, I think reading in between the lines of, you know, I just went back and listened to his uh, last two pressers. 
I think everything adds up to Nick Mullins being the guy in my estimation. I mean, he's the guy with two more years of experience in this offense, three more years of experience in the NFL. He's gone up against NFL defenses and NFL pass rushers, uh, 24 career starts played in 33 games. He's the guy I would assume they want to roll out of the bye with and just see what four full quarters look like with all the pieces in place because – you know, I'm not at practice. We're not at practice. I don't know what these guys look like all week, but on paper, Nick Mullins, he's definitely the safest option you have of the three when it comes to just running the offense the most consistently and has all the little bearings down path, if that makes Mull sense. Yeah, Mullins makes sense because of the value that KOC puts on accurate delivery, on-time delivery. He also makes sense because he was the backup against Chicago. Jaron Hall was the number three. So just depth chart-wise that seems logical that you would go down to Mullins. If it's Coach Sam Ekstrom, and I've got all the weight on my shoulders, I'm going to Jaron Hall. I mean, I think that with Dobbs and with Mullins, you've got a turnover proclivity. Nick Mullins is not necessarily a safe quarterback. Look at his 2020 numbers with San Francisco, an offense that makes quarterbacks look like gods. He was the had the second highest percentage of turnover worthy plays. He's like one to one touchdown to interception in his career. He's five and twelve. Jaron Hall is at least untapped. I mean, if there's a ten percent chance that that he can be like a, a really he can have the mobility of Dobbs with the understanding of the offense that they lack with Dobbs, I think that's the best case scenario. I would like to see, and you always have Mullins and Dobbs. I have bad news about Jaron Hall's turnover proclivity. Tell me about it. Tell me about uh, it. Come on. Shatter I, well, me. I I'm not gonna shatter you because I don't disagree with you. Um if, if it if 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 I had my druthers, I would go with Hall too. But I am kind of at peace with like, yeah, if, if it was gonna be Hall, he probably would have been the primary backup on Monday night. Yeah. Um but all three of these guys are capable of mind melting turnovers. I don't think that there's an option that gets rid of that. It kind of feels like a wash all the way at BYU. Jaron Hall had some that really just made you want to like quit Mormonism altogether. Um, the Is Nick, Luke like, I'd be done in by the two Church year, of the two year mission trip would do me in. <laughs> <laughs> like truly just makes you want to stop knocking on doors, really ruin your faith in um, what they're doing over there. Wrong, but, please. <laughs> uh, but like Dobbs will do it and Mullins will do it too. Uh, but what, but I, I think what you said about like Hall being comfortable with the rhythm and timing element of the offense, we saw that in just a little bit, he played against uh, Atlanta. We saw that he can do that. And then, yeah, if he can still have the mobility and a little bit of improvisation, he's not as cool of an improviser as Dobbs is. I would go with that, but it's clear that the, um, extra stability i guess you would you would say that you get with mullins and i think a a quicker process i think mullins is the fastest not necessarily mental processor but like the way that he drops back one either he's is very fast um the ball is just gonna get out quick with mullins and i think they're gonna be a little bit more inclined to that that's that would be my guess too but Kevin O'Connell also did talk about, he mentioned it offhandedly, the idea of, of yeah. molding the offense to Dobbs' strengths. So maybe if you do want to stick with Dobbs, you go, yeah, but we'll do like QB running. We'll make this a little bit of a different thing, not rely on the timing so much. I don't think I like that better because you still have a, a quarterback that's like not used to throwing to these receivers, but I can at least see like that there would be a vision to that. Yeah. Uh, so I do, I do want to say this um, in defense of Nick Mullins, a thing I wouldn't, Really didn't have that on your bingo it. card it's, today it's weird year for all of us it's okay <laughs> uh so so nick mullins is like epa adjusted net yards per attempt his efficiency numbers overall i uh, would would place him like 22nd in the league in like 2020 and you know that's not like wonderful but i think that that is significantly better than you could reasonably expect from a player in his position or a player in Jaron Hall's position or honestly a player in Joshua Dobbs's position. I no idea how Dobbs got where he got, but um, that's like not 
bad. Like, yeah, he has a high turnover worthy play rate and that'll impact kind of the way that like the fact that he didn't throw as many interceptions as that would indicate uh, will impact the way that we evaluate those things. But like overall, like, yeah, his numbers in a vacuum aren't good, but his numbers in the context of, Hey, we're looking at backup quarterbacks right now are great. Like I, like it, that I think is, is fine to say, yeah, sure, he's not necessarily a safe quarterback compared to a starter, but I think that there's a really good argument that he's a safe quarterback compared to a fifth-round rookie, especially a guy that keeps on getting put as the third quarterback and not even um, an active third quarterback, a thing that I would imagine the Vikings would have started doing by now. They're not. <laughs> um, so I'll say that, and I do think it's probably going to be Mullins because he keeps on being activated as the backup quarterback uh, as opposed to the third quarterback yeah uh, here's the fringe benefit though if you go with hall and again i agree that the tea leaves point to mullins but if you are willing to kind of take far-fetched attempts at finding a future quarterback like if we were serious about having the dobbs conversation like could dobbs be the future well you'd rather discover the guy who's under contract for three more so years because that was always the caveat with Dobbs. I, I So I think that that is a fine line of argumentation. But if we're trying to figure out what the best ways to win are right now, to me, the question is, and we'll, we'll talk about this probably later. Uh, the question is, how good is that defense going to be for the rest of the season? Because if it is a great defense, if it is like a top three defense for the rest of the season, I want the safe guy. If it is going to be a top 10 defense or an average defense for the rest of the season, I want the volatile guy. I want the guy that is going to either win by a little or lose by a lot. Like, that's the guy that I want. I don't want to always be scoring 18 points, which is kind of what I see with Nick Mullins. Mm -hmm. But if I'm only allowing 10 points, I always want to score 18. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, that's I think a good point. Your preference for volatility depends on how good you think the rest of the team is also we're never going to be able to evaluate this fairly because if they change quarterbacks the new guy's going to get justin jefferson and joshua dobbs <laughs> it's never going to happen <laughs> yeah it's true big, yeah big, for sure big factor. Big yeah factor. there's one thing about mullins i want to say because i think i can already like kind of feel the conversation that people are having turning in like a very sean mannion -y direction with him he's not sean mannion and a key better. difference is well that he's better at quarterback but uh, a key way in which he is better at quarterback is that he's very much is willing to be aggressive in a way that Sean Mannion was not. And the offense compressed so much in that one Mannion game in a way it will not have to with, with Mullins. He is willing to try to do improvisational stuff to get a dangerous pass off and, you know, in the grasp of a sack or to throw something deep that isn't actually part of the progression, but he sees something pre-snap like there is going to be that dynamicism with with Mullins in a way that I think with Mannion, it was like, well, I guess we'll just kind of run spacing all all game and hope that we win this six to three. And that was never going to happen. <laughs> um, they, like it, they're, they're definitely very different quarterbacks. I, I think just because they're the known quantity backups, people are like, like yeah, it feels the like the, the 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 Mannion conversations are like drafting right onto. Well, we've got our known backup and our rookie. It's Ma Mannion and Mond again. It's like, no, no, no. These guys are both like a lot better than their counterparts. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I, Mullins, 24 games started, 27 to 24 touchdown interception ratio. Didn't know about the fumbles. Eight career fumbles, last four of them as well. So you're right. All oh, three cool. Of these that guys hasn't can, been an issue. All three of these guys <laughs> no. can turn the ball over. No, not at all. No. Um, it's not getting we, we better. Have, like people like the, <laughs> the, the playoff picture and all of the percentages is like, I, they're going to turn the ball over a ton and it's going to ruin the season. Like it's just going to happen whether it's a regular season or postseason. This Ar is how it's ending. Arguably already has. <laughs> Get ready. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, Nick Mullins in the pre in the vanilla preseason, I thought he was very decisive with his delivery. And if he could duplicate these numbers, 27 of 43, 290, one touchdown, no picks. Like if you could extrapolate that for one game's worth, I think that that would be acceptable. We've got Ron Johnson coming up in just a second. We're going to get his take on it. But first, a word from Prize Picks. Prize Picks helps uh, bring us today's show. It is a great way to play daily fantasy. It's you versus the numbers. Mono a mono. You're not going up against a thousand sharks that do this for a living with a zillion entries. It's just two to six stat projections 
You take the over, the under, boom. You've got your uh, prize picks ticket all filled out. And it's fun. It's cross-sport. You can do these combo bets like Travis Kelsey over receptions and LeBron James three-pointers made, something like that. You can get a Justin Jefferson line against the Raiders in two weeks because he'll probably be playing. And you can pair that with like Carl Anthony Towns points. That's a lot of fun if you're a Minnesota sports fan. It's cool too, because if somebody gets hurt in the first half, there's an injury reboot policy for football and basketball games. So if your player gets hurt, that player's rebooted. And they're the only daily fantasy sports platform that has an injury insurance policy. So here's what you do. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Use code locked on NFL. One word, all lowercase locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. It's fast. It's easy. It's cross sport. There's injury insurance. Join today. Prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. We bring Ron Johnson to the stage. He's the host of the Ron Johnson Show. You're on Locked On Sports Minnesota. He's on Twitter slash X at 3 Ron Johnson. And Ron, we won't mess around. We'll ask you right away. We're talking uh, Vikings quarterback going forward. This was a topic on your Tuesday show as we discussed it. Where's your head at now? Dobbs, Mullins, or Jaron Hall? Um, I'm going to go with, let's put Brandon Powell at quarterback. Let's go. Um, yes. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Like, if we put Brandon Powell at quarterback, we could just go Wildcat and uh, just live it up. No, um, honestly, it, it's tough for me to really just pick one, you know, thought. I, my thought with Nick Mullins is more like Kirk Cousins. Um, offense doesn't have to change too much. Um, my my thought with Josh Dobbs is Josh Dobbs gives you the improvisation that the offensive line sometimes requires when they're not picking up blocks when they're missing guys. Um, I think Josh Dobbs gives you an additional runner. I think Kevin O'Connell didn't really think that through that. Let me just use what I have and scheme this guy to run. I think he came into this game saying it's been 27 days. I feel like at this point you should be able to figure this out. Here's the biggest problem with that. Words are easy to say. Concepts are easy to draw. But when you have to get into a game and remember all of that, the words, the concepts, the hots, it's not easy to do. And we saw that with Kirk Cousins during training camp a year ago when he first got to Kevin O'Connell's offense. He talked about how hard it was. And so I think Kevin O'Connell overthought this aerospace engineer and he just he just made it harder than it had to be. Um, I've, I've, I'm breaking down Sunday. We're going to do a bi week edition of uh, concepts. We're not doing. Josh Dobbs, Kirk Cousins, we're not doing a specific quarterback. Uh, we're going to do concepts, and I'm breaking down some concepts that the Vikings have shown me that Kevin O'Connell has, um, one with just, Justin Jefferson and then two without Justin Jefferson, and the difference as well. Uh, I heard one of you guys saying it, like, whoever gets Justin Jefferson is going to have, have an added advantage, and this is the added advantage. And a lot of three-by-one sets, when you put Justin Jefferson backside as the one, you automatically get a double team on the backside, which kind of leaves your front side guys manned up and you see TJ Hawkinson getting lost in coverage. And this is mainly the Eagles game. You watch a lot of the Eagles game. They were doubling Justin Jefferson. They were keeping a spy on Justin Jefferson, a safety linebacker. So TJ Hawkinson was coming open on a lot of inside routes because that additional safety backside was worried about Justin Jefferson. He said, screw Hawkinson. I'm not letting Jefferson beat us. And I think that's the difference. Without Justin Jefferson, you're seeing more true too high. And so what Josh Dobbs is understanding too high is the, the, the key is the linebacker. And if the linebacker is not dropping in Tampa two, you take the, you take what's behind him. If he drops back, you take what's in front of him. And so understanding these concepts to me is not Josh Dobbs strong point. And I think that's where he got screwed in this game. We see a lot of his time and throws were just early or late. And then when they were too early, it was hitting guys in the face or the hands. And then it was an interception. So I think that's the biggest key is Dobbs really, I don't know if he went to this game understanding what the true timing was on that touchdown drive. His timing was perfect. And that's one of the plays I'm breaking down. Uh, his touchdown drive plays, he was on time every single time. He looked off the safety when he needed to. Um, the problem is consistency. And I think that's what a lot of quarterbacks face is can he do that every single time? And right now the answer is no. Can Nick Mullins get away from a sack? We don't know. And I think that's the, the the ups and downs between the two. 
Hey, Ron, we're going to talk about Brian Flores here in a little bit. Just knowing what you know with him, the success he's had, what, what are the odds in your mind that he'll be back next year? Has he coached himself into a head coaching job next year? And I guess, how much do you think the off-the-field stuff, too, is going to deal or come into play, right, come into factor, the extra baggage into this ultimate outcome? What do you think? Well, one, he kind of he, he dropped roots down in Eden Prairie, so he's kind of, you know, liking it here. Uh, but two, it's an investment too. A lot of people are like, oh, he bought a house, so he's at least gonna be here for three years. No, when you got that much money, it becomes an investment. Um, <laughs> especially it's real estate, a, baby. Yeah, when you're gonna take a, a five million, six million dollar job the next year, hey, you could pay two mortgages. So uh, Brian Flores doing that, I don't feel like it's a lock. I do feel like he wants to go to the uh, not perfect situation, but a better situation than Jonathan Gannon. Uh, you look at when you walk into the the Cardinals. It's absolutely horrible for him. And so he's trying to become explosive without a quarterback, uh, without true weapons. Um, it, it, it's tough. And so pew, pew, pew. for Flores, I think he's looking for a situation um, like a Panthers. You know, honestly, like when you look at how he can build that defense around a team and, and maybe get an offensive coordinator that can handle Bryce Young and go get them some weapons in this draft. Um, I, I think that would be the key. Chicago Bears, I don't know if Ibra Flus would get fired. It sounds like uh, they like him. Ryan Poles likes him. But, again, if a job like that came open, you look at that defense, you look at that quarterback, uh, plus all those draft picks, that's another great situation for Flores to walk into. So I don't think he would walk into a poverty-stricken organization and just try to be the hero because look at Rich Gay or uh, Frank Wright. Mm -hmm. He got fired in six, what, eight games, ten games, whatever that was, 12 games. So I think Flores has that in his mind, too. Like, uh, do I want to go somewhere for one year and then get fired? Mm -hmm. Even though the Panthers did say their next quarterback should bury the owner. Uh, that was very morbid. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, he is looking for a coach to put him in the grave. So I don't know if that means lose a whole bunch of games and kill me or, you know, just stick around long enough so I can die. I really don't understand that one. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point, though, because most head coaching – opportunities or you know vacancies are usually on poor teams that ended at you know top bottom five bottom ten in the league so you're right, right. something to consider there as well with brian flores yeah uh it's it's not a good sign for an organization though when like on espn they're like hey it's one of 32 jobs and that's like the <laughs> selling point it's like right right uh <laughs> Uh, it's amazing. <laughs> At least the, the top 32 Squid, jobs. Squid Games was like one of, a, <laughs> one of, one of a, a few jobs to win a lot of money. Yeah. I don't know if that's the job I want either. It's amazing is that, Ron, uh, what you said about Joshua Dobbs and timing and the concepts is exactly what Luke Braun wrote. I feel like you two uh, might actually become friends over time. Who's, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to lie. Like, I, I've, Luke has grown on me. Um, you know. <laughs> Talking, uh, we, we had a Twitter talk uh, on. Uh, oh, yeah, talking run, run game. Yeah, talking on the run game. Run game all day. I, had to, I had to put my tight end hat back on from the Chicago Bears days. And I was like, you know what? I, I think somebody, and, and he said communication. I'm like, yeah, somebody is miscommunicating what the call is. And so, yeah, so me and, me and, me and Luke are, are all right. on the same page with a lot of stuff. All As right, if so this Viking season couldn't get any weirder. All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I've got I've got a question unrelated to any of this. Wes Welker apparently <laughs> said today, uh, Randy Moss was the best deep ball receiver in the game. Tyreek Hill runs the whole route tree. Name a route he can't run, how he approaches every day. Every game is impressive. That's where he separates himself. This to me suggests that Wes Welker, former teammate of Randy Moss, thinks that Randy Moss did not run the whole route tree. This, of course, is inspired uh, an argument on my timeline about whether or not Randy Moss would go over the middle, whether or not Randy Ra uh, Moss uh, ran routes well. And you're a former wide receiver, uh, and you're not, you know, trying to get hot take clicks on ESPN, like apparently I think Wes Welker might be. What's your take on Randy Moss and the ability to run a whole route tree? Um, I hope Wes Welker uh, doesn't have to uh, take drug tests anymore because he should be drug tested for that one. Um <laughs> As we saw with Peyton Manning's route tree on ESPN, uh, which is hilarious that people thought that Peyton was just guessing or getting it right and figured it out. I'm like, that's the same route tree I learned in the third grade. Um, there is a hitch. There's a shallow. There's a slant. There's an out. There's a curl. There's a comeback. There is a post, skinny post, bang post, deep post, corner route. And then there's the go. 
I don't think I've named any route in there that Randy Moss hasn't run. He is one of the best post corner runners. He is one of the best post runners as he mooned the Packers as he ran a post. Mm -hmm. um, he's one of the best slant runners. When you look at the old Marshall film, he's one of the best screen runners. When you watch Marshall film, he's one of the most best smoke runners when he just caught the one, one step, mm -hmm. caught it and took it to the house. Like one of his so Thanksgiving Wes touchdowns. Roker, saying that what I think he's trying to say is Tyreek Hill has quick feet. And he has one of those gold feet guys that does all the BS and jiggle, 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 swiggle, swiggle, swing, whatever, all that crap that they do. Um, but if you ever watch Randy Moss, Chris Carter, footwork film, working on offseason, Randy Moss has some of the best feet we've ever seen for a guy 6'4". Um, so that's absolute blasphemy. Um, yeah, that's blasphemy. That, I mean, I don't know if you guys have seen the previews for uh, what's, what's the gal. Uh, she's doing that movie Genie that's on like Peacock or something. Melissa McCarthy. Yeah, Melissa McCarthy and the guy is like, you've been, a, you, you know, you you were you're from two thousand years ago, and he talked about. She's like, what is Christmas? He's like, oh, it's it's Jesus Christ. It's his uh blah blah. He's like, what did he? Why is he getting a day? He's like, well, he was God's son. She was like, oh, I thought he was joking. You know, like that's where <laughs> that's where I feel like Wes Welker is, is kind of that's the blasphemy of Wes Welker. He is literally like saying Randy Moss can't run every route is like say I didn't know. That was Jesus's son. Like, come on now. Like, we, we are <laughs> we we hit a whole new level of blasphemy by trying to. I get it though. Like, it, he is quick. He's fast. But Randy Moss also was like four two. Like, come on now. He's right. six four. Ran a four two. So, I, you give me Randy Moss in his prime. You give me Tariq in his prime. Head to head running. They both are four two. Like Tyreek might get him in the sixty, but Randy's gonna get him in the two hundred. That's the whole. Michael Johnson versus I forgot who he ran against. Like uh, Carl Lewis? Yeah. Or was it Carl Lewis? It was some sprinter. Like they were saying Michael Johnson versus no, no, no. Uh the dude, Maurice now, Green. Usain Bolt. You no, Bolt? Maurice Green. It was like no. Maurice Mar Green. Oh yeah, Maurice Green. Yeah. yeah. Remember him and Michael Johnson had the yeah. runoff at like 150 yard meters because Michael Johnson was the 200, 400, Maurice Green was a hundred, and they were like, Who's the fastest man in the world? So they're like, let's run the 150 and see. So that's where I put Tyreek and, and Randy, both fast, fastest in the world when you talk about 4-2 speed. But, yeah, Wes Welker, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't do that. Ain't happening. Ron, uh, simple question. Who is the head coach of the Gophers in 2024? P.J. Fleck. Come on now. I just wish him a happy birthday on text. Um, he is definitely the coach. This is the reason I say this. You look at the past, I think I forgot how many years they went back. I think the last five seasons. Uh, there's only six teams in the Big Ten that are above 500. Minnesota is one of them. Um, so for some of these newer teams like Rutgers and Maryland finding some success, the last five years they have not been good. The Gophers, the last five years, have been above 500. Uh, this is the one year uh, that they are not in the last five. And so I, I get it. It's tough. It's it's hard to swallow. But let's not forget Kirk Ferentz in Iowa at one point lost to the Gophers three times in a row when I played. Uh, after that, Kirk Ferentz had a season, I think we won four games. Like, they haven't always been great, and you have to give them time. The Gophers are never going to be an NIL powerhouse until some of these people in the city decide to give some money. Um, you just saw Matt Rule say uh, a top-tier quarterback in the transfer portal is a million dollars or more. So, come on now. Like, like the Gophers, Nebraska, like, Wisconsin even, they're not going to – even Iowa is not going to hit that million-dollar NIL guy type of deal. Um, they're going to have to do it by recruiting well, getting some of these high school kids and college transfers and putting a good seven, eight, nine win season together. Um, if people think Minnesota is just going to get to the national championship without money, you're, you're smoking the best of marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> but enough about Colorado. <laughs> right. right. So I was going to say th thanks, Tim Waltz. <laughs> <laughs> Ron, uh, Five weeks left in the Viking season after this bye. Uh, you get Jefferson back. Mm -hmm. Maybe you get Davenport back. Maybe you get some stability at quarterback. Is Are the Vikings still a playoff team in your mind? Yeah. I mean, you look at the playoffs. I mean, who's pushing them? The Seahawks. You got the uh, the Packers are around them. Um, yeah, I think they are for sure. I mean, and, and I said this before. I think nine games is going to get you into the playoffs in, in this yep. NFC. And so the, the Vikings, and again, seven versus six. Who would you rather be? It's whoever gets to play the Lions. I don't want to play the 49ers. So I think either way, this is the best case scenario. The Vikings go into that last game versus the Lions. They've already clinched, like, let's say, six. 
or even seven and the lions if the lions win they get two i'm letting the lions get two and we take seven so we can go beat them the next week mm -hmm. and rest all our guys the last week um because either way you're gonna have to go on the road whether it's san fran or detroit i rather go to detroit on the road um versus san fran um and when you do that you have a chance to beat them and then you get to go play the best you got to get the super bowl by beating the best anyway you might as well do it early on mm -hmm. a round table tomorrow with ron johnson reggie wilson julia daniels that'll be a lot of fun we'll talk wolves we'll talk wild firing their coach we'll talk gophers we'll talk bikes all of that on the friday round table here at locked on sports minnesota and he's ron johnson the host of it thanks a lot ron appreciate it Good stuff from Ron. We're going to update our preseason predictions after a word from our partners. We are brought to you today by DoorDash. Did the game go to a timeout? Time to order with DoorDash because that's how fast it is. If it's halftime, you can probably get some food by the start of the third quarter. It takes like two minutes to order, quick delivery. You can get your favorite groceries or your favorite appetizers or entrees from local restaurants. Why root for your team on an empty stomach? Pizza, wings, soda, burgers, or even just buns from the grocery store. Get it on DoorDash without missing the game. It's so convenient. It's perfect for your tailgate, perfect for game day. Get 50% off up to $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order. When you download the DoorDash app, enter code LOCKED23. That's 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend... $15 or more on your first order. Download the DoorDash app. Enter code LOCK23. Subject to change, terms apply. DoorDash, the best groceries, the best restaurant food. And it all gets to your door fast for your football viewing party. We're also brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Wonderful new promotion going on at FanDuel. As the weather gets cold, the deals get hot. New customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning five dollar money line bet that means you can find a minus four thousand in college basketball you win it you get it 150 dollars into your account if your team wins so if you've wanted to join FanDuel this is a pretty good time to do so it's a very easy to use FanDuel sportsbook app and you can get started also at FanDuel.com slash locked on spreads player props futures over-unders plenty more trust me hundreds of ways to wager FanDuel an official partner of the NFL if you guys recall back on September 7th we made predictions for the Vikings season specific predictions uh, I don't That's recall that and it didn't happen <laughs> let's check in on them what do you think <laughs> I've got I the results I right here I don't know what to check in on because the that never happened. We never made any it predictions. Greatly we depends would, on the we, mood I was in that day. We would never make predictions, not on this show. Not on this show. I just <laughs> no. remember a reef freaking out when we all said there would be a lot of one score games again. Oh, yeah, I, I think I said all they'd be five remember. and five in one score games. And they're oh, five. And and I was six. like, what you think there's ten one score games again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> Bunch of idiots. <laughs> Surely, surely it sure, won't be like this yeah. again. Not, the show is the all about third year in a row. Right. <laughs> so because our they were, they were a record number of one score games two years ago. Like it them. needs to be, yeah, yeah, like yeah. thirteen one score games that tied the NFL <laughs> record, and then eleven one score. Like come I'm on, dude. come on, dude. <laughs> we'll get to that. That's down. That's number. That's five. <laughs> we'll that's that. five on the list. Um. <laughs> Four, actually, number four. So we predicted Justin Jefferson receptions, yards, and touchdowns. And this is a sad one. Because, <laughs> I was not serious about this. <laughs> because he will not fulfill this. Um, he is on pace. Yeah, let's 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 use the on pace numbers. We're using on pace numbers. Yep. Okay, great. Um 72 catches, eleven forty-two yards, six touchdowns. So whoever had the lowest guess um would be the winner here. That was me. We're were he to play a 17 game season, what would he Sorry, be? Sorry, that's what I meant for? by on pace. I thought it was, uh, I thought you were doing on yeah. pace. For oh, 17. so you, okay, you wanted his healthy pace. Got it. Yes. Um, all right, quick. Move on. I can, I can do that math while you do it. I've, I've got it. I've got it right here. So 36 times 17 divided by, nope, 36 divided by five there times 17. 
It's like, wait, wait, uh, there's a nerdy stat. The game? <laughs> <laughs> okay, 122 yeah. receptions. Um, That's right. 571. Two's yards per game time, 17. 17. 1941. Yeah. That's crazy um, given that his fifth game was a dud before he got injured. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. So no. given <laughs> given that, given the on pace, then a reef who projected 134 and 1949. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> would be the winner. Let's Eight go. Yards I'm off. It. That's that's a shadow win. I'll take it. What, what did I what did I have off. for yards? Because I know I was close to 2K. Yep. So Inman, you were actually just over that. You went 1978. Mm, okay. Well, pretty close. Yep. Mm -hmm. Very close. Um, so we'll also use pace for Kirk Cousins. Now I'm just scratching my head. Who was it among us that thought Kirk Cousins could be a five thousand yard passer? Yards. That might have Who? been you, Sam. I, okay. Uh, oh, thank you. Vaguely recall. Yeah. So Kirk Cousins pace through eight games. <laughs> 4,953 yards. Jeez. There you go. I said like 4,800, right? Like I wasn't that far off. 38 touchdowns, 11 picks. Um, Luke Inman wins that one. Most optimistic. Luke had him at 4,997. Was that like a was that like a negative, like a negative yardage pass on the final play of the game to miss 5,000? Yeah, I, re 5, I remember getting poked at for <laughs> Neil, having that, JJ no, 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 just no, no. under 2K and Kirk just under 5K. But you know what? Um, <laughs> Wait, what? Luke was <laughs> bullish. <laughs> we also pr projected Kirk Cousins' fourth quarter comebacks. Currently, mm. or his pace uh, is zero because he didn't have any. But on pace for zero. All right. I predicted one, so that would go to that would go to me. All right. Actual non-injured player, Dan uh, sack leader, Daniel Hunter, on pace for nineteen. We projected. Uh, the sack leader, three of you had Hunter. I had Davenport. Terrible guess. Arif, you picked Hunter at 16 and a half. You'd be oh, the winner wow. there. I'm mm. surprised I did that because he's like a 14 and a half every year guy. Yeah, That's great. Luke, Good for me. Luke Braun had him leading the team with eight and a half. <laughs> uh, that, there's a logic to it. I get it. <laughs> Was, Record, you know, hey, I think I was saying like, yeah, all the sacks will be blitzes. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. Right. And, and everybody's going to have two. He's a late yeah. sack producer. So someone's going to get there first. Mm -hmm. and, okay, I get it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'll, I'll take my unsubstantiated win for sure. Yeah. No, I need to all take right. my lumps as as a mm -hmm. an ardent uh, denier of trading Daniil Hunter. I, yeah. my, I, I wavered. Yeah, that's rough. I didn't. Yeah. I shouldn't have wavered. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I've got two. Sam has one. Uh, Spinman has one. Braun has zero. Is that? Um. Okay. So a reef one. What two? Inman two. Inman one. Sam one. A reef two. Two one one. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um. Record in one score games. This is where a reef takes his lumps. He <laughs> made fun of us, and he picked three and three. Currently, they're five and six, and they have five games to go. All right. <laughs> I don't think all we right. can define one score games to go. Let's go. Well, from a percentage standpoint, I'm doing all right. Yeah. There, yeah. Well, so are so are the rest of us, though. Um oh, okay. I was yeah, I enough. picked five and four. Inman picked six and five. Braun picked five and five. So we are all kind of right right there if the That's season me. ended. Game, now. Baby. I, I think I think we gotta give that one to Braun then. Because he game. has the highest total and he's closest in percentage. Right? Yeah, he gets he has the wins correct and he's one off on the losses. Yeah. Yeah. So so two one one one. I don't know, but but they're still pacing though, right? Like we can't really settle right, this. Right, one. but well, I, yeah, I was... they could like win or lose one but... more close game and then that would be that. If so, you can change it. <laughs> um okay. but for today, we'll give it to Luke Braun. All right. Two one one one. All right. Alexander Madison hurdles. Ooh. Um I've poured you... over Alex? every single every single play of the season and i've concluded that there is one one yeah okay yeah he did <laughs> one in denver one right yeah <laughs> one in denver my scientific process was uh twitter searching the word madison and the word hurdle oh, okay actually it, i think that's pretty sound probably will not miss yeah. any yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and prior to the denver game no one had tweeted that those words since uh 2022 
I, when he did that, I said aloud to the person next to me in the stands, hey, he was a high school hurdler. I was just like, <laughs> such a normal <laughs> Just oozes out of you in, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> reflexively. Like, hey, look at that. <laughs> uh, I think that was the first time he actually hurdled someone for like two years. Yeah, it's been like a while. I think Mike Better Zimmer been. like pounded that out of him. He did not like it. Too much fun for Zim. Uh, yeah, I was about to say, Zim's probably right, but I hate that. <laughs> Same. Braun, you get that one, by the way. Braun picked nice. two. Interception what leader on? and right, how many? Pick? No, Sam, what did the rest of us pick in her? What? Uh, Inman, four. Arif, six. Four? Six. Sam, <laughs> what do you think Sam he's three. doing? <laughs> what? Oh, because I was like, he's the starter. He's going to hurdle that. Oh, right. it was the a volume, volume thing. I see. Yeah, it was a volume play. Yeah, it was like, it was like drafting mid fantasy. It's like, I'm not saying he's good. I'm saying he's getting the ball a lot. I'm just I glad have a I'm suggestion for a new Hell League war. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Interception leader and how many? Uh, current leader, Byron Murphy. He's on pace for like 4.3. Um, Arif, the only person to say Byron Murphy with six. Hey, hey look at that. Braun and Inman had Harrison Smith. I took Cam Bynum, who should have. Hey, a million. Yeah. That's pretty fair. Yep. Yeah. That was a good guess. Yeah. He right. still may be the, the winner when this is all said and done. Very, he's honest. one behind. Yeah. Certainly yeah, the, very well the best be. player in the secondary. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy that he and Josh Metellus, of all people, are dueling for that. Right. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. What if you want to call in? Josh Metellus in the secondary, that's, you know, <laughs> we can quibble right. with that. All right. Three, um, two, one, one. I'll, I'll take yep. this. Very good guess on this one. Um, by one of you. So longest play from scrimmage and which player? Correct answer Alexander is Madison, twenty-one yards. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's yeah. got to be an Addison one, right? Believe it or not, it's yeah. Jordan Addison, sixty-two yeah. yards at Philly. Um, Arif, you guess seventy-six yards. Jefferson, I guess ninety-six yards. Ty Chandler, <laughs> Luke Love Inman it. guessed seventy-two yards. Ty Chandler, and Luke Braun. You guessed 66 yards Addison on a hey. deep post. Wow. Look at that. All you, over it. it deep, I don't think it was a deep post, but I mean, you get full credit for that. That's credit. Wasn't it? I thought it. it was a deep I post. Think it was in the middle of the field. Oh, okay. Yeah, deep post. Yeah. That's crazy. Good, Good job, Bron. Pat on the back. You Let's put go. some money on that, we right? Got <laughs> yeah, yeah, just I'm you really wait. Just betting, you wait. So... Justin Jefferson's coming back. He's getting that 76 yarder or whatever I said. Mm hmm. It could happen. I dig it. Let's do it in Ford Field. Special teams, defensive touchdowns as a team. Uh, currently at two, Jordan Hicks and DJ Wanham. Um, I said defensive four. Defensive starters, but yeah. <laughs> I love special teams, man. Yeah. Braun, you said seven. <laughs> Ryan Flores, baby. Let's go. Let's go. You got no, remember, I'm not you got remember the training camp practices this man was watching yep. every night. <laughs> I, I I must have been on a Kenny Wong Wu kick for me to say five. That's yeah, crazy. two from Wong Wu, a couple of picks, some blitzy weird stuff. We got a couple, yeah, you know, I, we'll get I one against Fields. Stuff, yeah, you know, which we did. Ty, Ty Chandler's run the ball a couple of times. You know, maybe he'll yeah. break one out. <laughs> the winner is Inman. Inman said three, and he specifically said all on defense. And it, that's the pace Ooh, right now is three nice. all on defense. Oh, bonus point for that then, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. why not? <laughs> no. Uh, leading no. rusher and who? Three of us said Madison, and Madison is correct. Um, I said Chandler. I was wrong. Madison's current pace is 842. Ugh. Closest to that guess, Arif Hassan with Ugh. 888. Wow. What? Wow. <laughs> wow. I think I went like 60 yards per game and just times that by 17, just that, over a thousand, I think. Was that four three two one in terms of in terms of predictions? I don't think I've ever won the predictions game. Yeah, I think I, you're you're definitely this might up fall here. off. The the on pace might fall off though as his volume goes down too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we will be reevaluating. He's the only one that can manage to stay healthy. Who's to say? Yeah, true. Yeah, what so, did I have, Sam? Just over a yeah, thousand. So Luke had one thousand seventy-six. That's going to be tougher, I think, to to get to. But Braun could win if Madison devolves because he had seven thirty-nine. So the yeah, if I point, remember, part of it was you know mid-season Madison possibly right, losing his job to right. someone. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's 
you know, the the number of someone's that could be has diminished. But yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's, well, it grew and then diminished. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're back it's actually to the, the same group of people levels. as it yeah, was right. when we made this. <laughs> Last one, um, offensive or defensive snaps combined for the rookie class. Oh, oh, that oh this was right. tricky. This that was, was tricky. crazy. Honestly, really good efforts on on all our parts. Um, so the the pace right now is twenty two sixteen, two thousand two hundred sixteen. Okay. I, I feel like I said twenty one hundred or something. I feel like um, I said the exact number. I feel like I said twenty two sixteen. That's what it sounds like I said. Inman, you guessed 1705. I guessed 1760. Arif, 2001. Mm. Luke Braun, the winner here, 2144. Nice. Nice. Made a comeback really good. in this. I, I think it's kind of worked out exactly like we thought. It's been Blackman. It's been Pace. Ivan Pace. Addison. Yep. Jaquel and Roy here or there. Roy, a smattering of yeah, Andre Jaquel Carter. Roy Jaquel and Roy gets a three here, eight yeah. there, six yeah. here. Yeah. One snap yeah. of Jay Ward. Yeah, <laughs> which is what it's been. Jay Ward Leo killing Jackson it on special teams. I'll give him that. Absolutely godly punt jammer. That's awesome. Love hey, to hear that. Theo Jackson, best fifth safety in the league. Hard to beat that guy out. Let's go. <laughs> hey, who's on the <laughs> field? About on him from scrimmage. All right, different stuff. job. Different job. Yeah. Actually, fourth safety. I guess Lewis seems the fourth safety. Fifth safety. Jesus yeah. Christ, dude. Are we sure yeah. about? Don't that? say that too long. Do we know who's five and six? We don't. Well, I guess Jay Ward has a snap, so. Oh, yeah. Well, the scene? <laughs> uh, yeah. Scene might have been like a scratch because scene is not as good at special teams. Yeah. Um, like Jay Ward Monday, will always be active. Yeah. yeah. We'll, uh, Monday, we're going to circle back and talk more about the wait, Vikings wait, wait. defense. So, so did, did Luke and I tie or did I win? You, It's up to you guys to keep track of these things. I'm, cool, I'm, I won. Oh, okay. I can't count that high. I know. One, two, three, three for Braun. I think Arif had four, so Arif wins. Four or five, yeah. Arif Drag. wins the mid-season, pre-season prediction mid, check-in. Mid, mid hashtag season. on pace to win. Yeah, hashtag and yeah, seen yeah, 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 we got to circle back. We got to circle yeah. back. Yeah, yeah that, that could change. I think I had the worst. I've I changed my was... mind on hating the predictions check-in. I now love it. <laughs> you love it now. Yeah. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, you can chalk up the uh, the Cousins like, win part, part to of them Luke. were right, and then the Jefferson and the Jefferson won. win to well, that was so. Not, that, so yeah, there, there are two that rely on a healthy on pace, but I'll take it anyway. Mm-hmm. So, so let's just circle back real quick and recap. What were the two most ridiculous one? Bronze eight special teams touchdowns and Sam's Seven. eight hurdles. Madison Sam's hurdle. 96 yard Ty Chandler touchdown. Okay. Yeah, that yeah. was pretty yeah. extreme. Pretty, um, which rocks, hurdles, by the, the way. Hurdles were in there. Yeah. The hurdles, there's some interesting ideas. Yeah, Hunter, eight and a half sacks, pretty low. Um, Braun, you had cousins at just 4,001 yards. That's pretty low. <laughs> <laughs> pretty low. Pretty low. <laughs> Um, I, I, I gotta say, all of us were pretty ridiculous on Jefferson, and he just happened to have met those expectations correct yeah 100 right. percent. to be like this guy is not only going to break a receiving record he might crack 2000 we were all like yeah that makes sense and he's That'll like happen. yeah, yeah. yeah right. which he <laughs> almost did last year and he'll just be the same again that won't regress at all and it, yep <laughs> yep yeah he's gonna miss seven games and still be a thousand yard receiver this year in, in all likelihood crazy um, if they have a quarterback insane. Um, Monday, we'll talk more about the defense, this top 10 unit that's come out of nowhere. We'll start previewing the Raiders. It's all coming up on Monday. Make sure you check out the postcaster general, Luke Inman, on upcoming postcast Wolves Jazz tonight as the Wolves continue their uh, run atop the Western Conference. For Luke Inman, Luke Braun, Arif Fasan, I'm Sam Ekstrom. Thanks to the everydayers for watching here on Locked On Sports Minnesota. Later.